it. The body dies. and maybe no faith is impregnable. The agents of the enemy are everywhere. Watching, plotting, waiting. <laughs> Only thing to be done with heresy is to root it out. With fire and steel. I'm telling you, this soundtrack is going to be a banger. Welcome back, my friends, to Dark Tide in the 42nd millennium. And today, we'll be spotlighting the veteran, which will likely be far and away the most popular archetype for purging heretics and slicing through hordes of poxwalkers when Dark Tide goes gold on November 30th. We are also less than a week away from the closed beta and my first opportunity to post real gameplay, impressions, tutorials, and whatever else you guys want to see. So starting on Friday, the 14th of October and running through the 16th, there should be a storm of content and our first look at how this game will truly play. Now, before we get into the veteran details, let's just get the bad news out of the way early. We have confirmation from the devs. There will only be one subclass per archetype on launch day, which is to say that the preacher reveal for Zealot last week and the sharpshooter reveal for veteran this week those are the only subclasses available for those characters on day one, which means only one subclass for Ogren and only one subclass for Psyker for a total of four, which means there's no real distinction between them and the class archetypes we already know, which are, of course, Ogren, Psyker, Zealot, and Veteran. Now, considering the massive delays this title has already undergone, that's pretty disappointing, especially considering Zealot's Preacher class is essentially a one-to-one -one translation from Vermintide 2, and we've already seen evidence of both Psyker and Ogren sharing ultimate abilities and core similarities with their fantasy counterparts. Now, we still don't know how skill trees will work, we don't know how much customization there will be on that end, but at least from a talent perspective, I'd be shocked if it's even remotely the equivalent of the 15 subclasses in all those talents we had in Vermintide 2. With in-depth weapon customization and a great arsenal to choose from, of course it could still shake out nicely. And I think that's the big thing here, waiting to see how many weapons are in the game and how well implemented they are before we truly pass judgment. But it's really hard not to feel like this isn't a significant step backwards, going from 15 subclasses to four. And we're five, six years on from Vermintide 2. We shouldn't be going backwards in any capacity. And it really doesn't make that much sense to me either, when we consider the fact that so many core features, animations, and infrastructure are being carried over from an already successful title. It's not like Dark Tide's being built from scratch here. Now, I don't have a problem with those elements being carried over, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But then I certainly expect the game to deliver on the content front and expand and improve on titles we've had before. And at least on paper, I think it's fair to look at what's on offer here and maybe start getting a little bit worried with only four subclasses. All I can say is, I hope there are a lot of unique and interesting weapons to choose from, because if the arsenal and visual unlocks are bare bones too, people will seriously start questioning why Darktide was delayed for so long, and rightly so. 
and it also calls into question how classes will be handled going forward in terms of free updates or DLC. People didn't have an issue paying for Grail Knight, Sister of the Thorn, or Master Engineer because they were truly unique and interesting classes for a game that already had a lot of variety in playstyles base. The base game already had iconic characters like Slayer and Ironbreaker, Witch Hunter, and Waystalker. You had choice in how you went to approach combat and what your ultimate ability would be for each character. But it looks like we'll be missing some of that with Dark Tide, so Fast Shark will have to work that much harder on DLC to ensure people feel like they're getting their money's worth. Which, to be fair, with a few possible exceptions like Winds of Magic, I've always felt like Fat Shark's game and DLC pricing was pretty reasonable overall, but still, not an ideal situation here, and perhaps one that will dampen the hype a bit. So, that's the bad news, let's get into the fun stuff now. And there's a lot to be excited about here. For one, the core gameplay loop continues to impress in all of these Spotlight videos. Obviously, it's not the same thing as full, uncut gameplay, but we've seen that already. We have a fairly good idea of how combat functions and feels, and simply put, it looks fun as shit. I love what I'm seeing here. I really don't have much to complain about on that front. Now, when it comes to playstyle for the veteran, this is the closest we're going to get to a standard guardsman or Cadian trooper. And by extension, if you've never played a Tide game before, this class will be the easiest to transition into from any other FPS title, which is one of the major reasons why I think it'll be the most popular by a country mile. The key features for the sharpshooter class are pretty straightforward, so let's tackle those first before we get into the weapon details and the gameplay itself. Needless to say, the veteran will have a heavier emphasis on ranged combat than the zealot would, specifically kitted for doming elites and specials before they're able to close in and present a real threat. Passively, veterans deal increased damage to enemy weak spots and have more ammo than either psyker or preacher, so if you're planning on shooting your way through a level and don't enjoy the melee combat as much, I'd say you're crazy, but this might just be the class for you. Your class ability, or ultimate, taps into your training, granting laser focus, a bit of zoom, additional weak spot damage is taxed with your passive, and better weapon handling, improving accuracy and reducing recoil, as well as highlighting important threats like specials and elites, which will almost certainly be super impactful, because in contrast to Vermintide, some of the specials in Dark Tide aren't going to stand out as much. They're all going to be humanoid shaped, and they're all going to be carrying relatively similar equipment besides a few examples. So having a tool that immediately overcharges your ranged DPS while spotting enemy shotgunners, netters, grenadiers, snipers, and auto cannons, many of which will be mixed in with your regular hordes and ambient enemies, gonna be really useful. What isn't clear is how weapons like the shotgun will synergize with your kit because at face value, you're kind of gimping yourself and potentially hurting your team if you can't engage specials and corrupted guardsmen from a good distance away. Not to mention your ultimate ability is largely wasted on buckshot at point blank range. I mean, the damn thing literally gives you a zoom. Why would you ever need that if you're using a combat shotgun? So this is where a well fleshed out talent tree will be extremely important to allow players a wider variety of playstyles and weaponry and not force them down these narrow paths into only picking Laz or Plasma, for instance. If it's not thought out carefully, I can definitely foresee a meta developing where you get flamed for picking short range weaponry for guardsmen, and that really shouldn't be the case if features are implemented correctly and we have a wide variety of talents to choose from. Now in terms of the coherency bonus, which are the effects you receive when near allies, there will be a chance of not consuming ammunition upon firing, which will likely be more impactful for single shot or high powered weapons, like a grenade launcher or long las, neither of which have been confirmed, let me be clear, but if those things are in the game, those would certainly be much more impactful with that kind of passive than, say, an auto gun. So with that in mind, let's talk weapons and gadgets, and what has explicitly been shown or discussed up to this point. For melee, we have an axe, a falchion or machete designed for parrying, a power sword, a chain sword, and a combat shovel. For ranged combat, we have two distinct variants of stubber or auto gun, a las gun, a shotgun, a stub revolver, a plasma gun, and if concept art is to be believed, potentially a melta gun. Now again, even though the concept art is included in these blogs, and it would be a reasonable assumption, the same or similar content would actually be included in the game, I would still take it with a grain of salt, just so you don't end up disappointing yourself. Nothing about the visuals or weapons here are confirmed, unless the devs have talked about it or we've seen it in trailers and gameplay, but once again, I think it would be kind of messed up to get people hype with stuff like this and not include it. If you're putting it in your blog posts 
it should be in the freaking game. And a melted gun is exactly the type of iconic 40k weaponry that would get people super excited. Essentially a short range fusion gun that can melt through any material and incinerates armor. Not commonly carried by guardsmen, usually reserved for higher ranking officers or space marines due to their rarity and power. Though I think Tempestus Scions could certainly carry them. Kasterkin probably could as well. Any kind of stormtrooper, but realistically, it's a game. If a guardsman wants to carry a Melta and they want to put it in, we can use it. I don't think that'd be a really big deal. Inferno pistols would be great as well. But if Meltas were included, they'd have the potential to one or two shot Ogren Bulwarks, potentially even through their shields, and devastate bosses. But it would be incredibly ammo starved and force you into a more melee focused playstyle, only pulling it out for extremely dangerous enemies. I'm also not sure what style of guardsman kit this is, but hopefully there will be cosmetic options like that for unlocking, because it looks sweet, and again, the visual unlocks are going to be a major factor in a game like Dark Tide. It just gives us something to work towards. Now, I do know there's going to be cosmetic DLC, can pretty much guarantee it, but if they hide all that behind paywalls, it's going to feel pretty bad, so I'm hoping for some really cool cosmetics that are just unlocked through the course of the main game. Now, the standard equipment and visuals once you upgrade are very much in line with Cadians and Cadian Troopers, and in fact, some of the voice lines even reference this, but as much as Cadia has that quintessential look and feel for the Guard, Kriegsmen, Vestroyan Firstborn, Armageddon Steel Legion, Valhalla and Ice Warriors, Katachins, there are all kinds of different setups, weapons, and fighting styles within the Guard, within the Astra Militarum, and while I certainly don't expect all or even most of them to make an appearance, if Fat Shark want to make subclass DLC truly appealing, they'll have to go that extra mile with visuals, weaponry, and hitting those iconic classes hard, and branching out into other guard regiments for veteran, particularly those with unique equipment or fighting styles, would be a wise decision. So the standard LAS gun for sharpshooter is the M36 Cantrail Pattern LAS rifle, standard variant for Cadian Shock Troopers, and we've got a sapper shovel, so we can go full Kriegsman Battlefield 1 style and just bludgeon people to death with a sharp edge digging tool, which is seriously hype. You can see it has a very effective horizontal swing at head level, perfect for decapitating hordes of onrushing poxwalkers. And the power sword is really cool as well. This thing looks gorgeous. Now there is a distinction between that and a force sword. A force sword is psychic projection onto a weapon from a psyker, typically considered more powerful than a power sword. But in terms of melee weapons that a guardsman could carry, a power sword is certainly up there on the list. And slicing through armor and heads with that thing is going to be super fun. Though simply for gameplay reasons, there probably won't be a massive power difference between it and a normal axe, for example. Now, a couple of elements of the gameplay that really intrigues me here are the plasma rifle and this falchion machete thing designed around parries and counter-striking. The plasma gun looks and sounds awesome. Obviously, I'm hoping the damage potential will live up to the visuals. No idea if that will be the case or not, but damn, that thing looks freaking sick. And it will probably be one of the first gameplays I post if we have access to it in the beta. Although, realistically, I would imagine they're going to keep things pretty simple for the beta, and considering this is the first chance people have to post content, they're probably going to hold on to some of the spicier weapons for the actual game and not show them off early. But I mean, it's a plasma rifle, right? Expect it to rip through armor and devastate single targets, but it will overheat quite quickly and potentially explode if you aren't careful with managing your overcharge. The secondary fire will almost certainly be a massive charged blast that immediately renders the gun unusable for a short duration as it cools down. But the melee weapon that stole the show for me in the trailer was the falchion type thing, which has this beautiful transition from parry directly into decapitating strikes. Every time he blocks an enemy in the gameplay, he immediately turns it around into a counter killing blow, which looks awesome. And then of course there's the frag grenade, which is the standard grenade for veteran and does exactly what you'd expect. If you time it right, it's going to turn heretics into bloody chunks. So far, a lot of cool weapons, gadgets, and abilities on display. Combat is shaping up very nicely. Game's looking fun as hell, but there are some elements I'm a bit worried about, and hopefully the beta can assuage some of those fears. Naturally, we'll be covering the Psyker and Ogren as soon as our trailers are shown in the coming weeks. And as for the beta itself, be ready for a storm of gameplay starting in about five days. I'll be going hard on the Dark Tide content, so be sure to check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Indie Pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.